Uh, when you see y prime is helpful to write dy dx, it makes separation of the variables a little more intuitive. You can, because then you can put the x on the side and the y on the right side. Right, right. So one guiding rule, if you want a guiding rule, is hey, don't ever have a dx or a dy in the denominator. There's no way you're going to write the derivative with that. Okay. So let's. It's like almost always you're going to multiply both sides by dx, right? Yeah. It's almost always going to be the case. All right. So dy uh, over 1 plus y, let's just see this one, equals x dx. You're disgusting. You all agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh. Yeah. We take the inside <laughs> derivative of both sides. Yeah. I'm not very. Yeah. Inside derivative of dy over 1 plus y. It's going to be the natural log, right? We just got to kind of make sure that when we take the derivative of the denominator, we get exactly the numerator. It doesn't need to be multiplied by 3 or a negative or anything like that. Right? So we take the derivative of 1 plus y, we get 0 plus dy, 1 dy, right? And that is the numerator. So the natural log of 1 plus y plus c, but we'll, uh, we'll ignore that. We'll do plus c over here. Yeah, so it's 1 half x yeah. squared yeah. plus c. All right. Still gonna get y by itself. Yeah. E to the. E to the. One half. One half. Square x squared plus c. Minus one equals y. Minus one equals y, and we'll call this c one because I'm about to do what? Two c to. Write it yeah. as a constant times e to the let's say x squared yeah. over two. C. I I did the e to one half x squared minus one plus equals y. No plus C? I didn't put a C in at all. Now in this case, if you have not gotten in the habit of putting a plus C and you're going to try to yeah. do some kind of differential equation problem, you will get it wrong. Because there is a constant that you yeah. need to know. Are you Uh If you write this on the AP exam in a free response, I would put my money on it being fine. Okay. Uh, if you're on a, on a multiple choice, it won't look like this. It'll look like this. Okay. Okay. Be aware of that. How about the next one? That sounds like a good idea. Okay, so find the particular solution. Let me remind you what particular solution is. This is the general solution. What would the particular solution that this have that this doesn't have? You have to plug in points. It would have a constant C and. No, not a, not a definite integral. The definite integral is, remember, when you put limits on it from like 1 to 5 or whatever? That's the definite integral. So the particular solution is going to basically have uh, oh, wait a minute. Is that right? Yeah, OK. So we'll know C. I, in my head, there was a K, but there shouldn't be a K there. OK, so we'll know what C is. So we're going to do the same exact kind of a thing. Then we'll plug in 110 or 0, 10 and figure out what C is, and we'll have the particular solution. All right, so dy equals 3 fourths y dt. We'll divide by y, and y. dy over y equals 3 fourths dt. We'll take the answer derivative of this side. Answer derivative of this side. I'm coming off that 3 fourths, not cause, just because I want to, and it would be easier, but because it's a constant multiple times whatever we're taking the, trying to take the antiderivative of. Uh, what's the antiderivative of the dy over y? Natural log of y. Natural log of y, simple. Antiderivative of t, or, or sorry, of dt, 1 dt. D. Just what? D. Just t, so 3 fourths t. Plus c. Plus c. So c e to the 3 fourths t equals y. Yes? Just skip the step of writing a plus C in the, in the exponent and bring in, okay? We'll call it C1 so we don't get confused. These C's are not the same C. Yeah. Okay. Uh, finding the particular solution means finding out what C is. We can do that because they give us 0, 10. They're real nice to us, giving us a 0 for T because of what happens. C times E to the 3 fourths times 0 equals 10. What's 3 fourths times 0? Good job. E to the zero. <laughs> one. What? One. one. E to the zero. Anything to the zero is one. So C times one is ten. So C is ten. So Y equals ten. E to the three fourths T. You should probably get the easier side. I know. <laughs> You're ready. You're right now. I'm just giving her she's grabbing the job. <laughs> they're, they're giving the early test for smarty pants just across the street. Uh, oh, I'll, 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 I'll go over here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was 
supposed to tell you about the AP test, the, uh, gosh, if you qualify, even if you don't receive free and reduced lunch, if you qualify for free and reduced lunch, you can take the AP test for $22. What? We'll talk to Mrs. Williams. That's what she told me this morning. That's crazy. That's good. good but there's stuff. like a, a government program that helps those who don't have those funds fail to do it. Okay? I'm drinking lots of water. All right, ready? The rate of change of and so it's there's this proportional talk. There's proportional. There's uh, inversely proportional. If you watch the video, I went through all these. Proportional, inversely proportional, and joint varies jointly or jointly varying wow. or some kind of wording like that. Let me run through them real quick. Uh, in this case, let's just use these variables. Uh, we're talking about a relationship between n and t, right? Plug in t, you use your n. Right? So what they're saying is that the rate of change of n, obviously with respect to t, so dn dt, is, okay, is, equal sign, is, proportional to, means k times, Proportional to means k mm -hmm. times whatever they say. N. Just a constant? Yeah. Okay. What is? K. K is a constant. Okay, now, um, when it says proportional to, it can be proportional to a lot of things. Proportional to n, proportional to the difference of, and like it could be this whole expression. Proportional to the square of n, right? So that'd be n squared. Right? The proportional to part is just it starts you off with k times, and then it's k times whatever they tell you. Okay? Inversely proportional, let me show you that by contrast. Inversely proportional would mean, like this, you see as n gets bigger, this gets bigger, right? Even if, even if k is a fraction, as n gets bigger, this gets bigger, yeah? So we call it proportional, directly proportional. It goes up, goes up. But here, dn, dt, if it's inversely proportional, that means not k times n, but k over, right? The inversely proportional means k divided by whatever they tell you, n, square of n, whatever, all right? So that would be inversely proportional to n. That has nothing to do with this problem, except for, you might see that vocabulary from here, uh, you know, here and there. Okay, um, so di directly proportional to n, or proportional to n, when t is equal to zero, blah, 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 what do they want to know? What is the value of n when t is four? So I need to be able to plug in t and have it tell me what n is. That's not what this function does. We need a function that is just n equals blah, 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 t. Right? Does that make sense? You know, t is like our x and n is like our y. But we don't have that. How do we find that? Uh, what? Um, derivative. Uh, well, it is a differential equation. <laughs> Separation. Separate, Separate the variables. Yeah. Answer the derivatives. <laughs> solve for n. Okay. So dn over n, I would say much easier to do dn over n than dn over kn, which you could do, but it would just add another level of difficulty. Equals k dt. dt. Take the antiderivative of both sides. I'm going to leave k outside the antiderivative because it's a constant multiple. Antiderivative of dn over n. Natural I've done this so many times. <laughs> we should know. Kt plus c. So C times E to the KT equals N. Are we all tracking? Mm -hmm. All making sense? Yes, Aaron? Okay. Yeah, I forgot the KT. Okay. Um, let's see, what else is that? When T is zero, they're so nice. They're giving us T is zero. T is zero, N is 250, right? So C times E to the k times zero gives us 250, right? This is our function that you plug in t gives you n. So we have a t and an n, we plug it in, and what, what c is? What is c? 250. 250, because e to the zero is one. How nice. It's like three extra natural logs in there, because I don't know what happened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> three extra natural logs? <laughs> it's fine. Oh, yeah. I did that one, so unbelievable. Okay, c is 250. When t is 1, n is 400. So we have another one, but we get to do this again knowing what c is, which means we can figure out what k is, and then we can figure out.
figure out what happens when t is 4. So 250 e to the k times 1 equals 400. All right, we're going to divide 400 by 250. We got 40 over 25. Just kind of taking the zeros off at least. Equals e to the k, which is the natural log of 40 over 250, or 25, 40 over 25 equals k. So now we can plug that in for k. We can plug 250 in for c. And and four in for t and figure out the final answer. 250 times e to the natural log of 40 over 25 times four. Yeah, the calculator. Calculator. Okay, I'll do it really fast. See if you can follow along. See how you do. I'll do it perfectly. Oh! And you guys can That's try. some pressure. No. I'm going to LOL when you don't do it perfectly sometimes. It's not going to happen. We're all going to laugh at you. Uh, natural log of uh, 40 over 25. I was like, yeah, I'm not using any calculus, and then, <laughs> and then I got really. How hard is that problem? Not question. Too hard for the steps, maybe a lot of steps, but it's really not that hard. Yeah. You said that we could do this almost like a proportion problem, like put, um, like one over four hundred equals blank over, or um, like one over four hundred equals four over something. No, you said that we could use this without calculus, and it's just oh. been, um, I've just been wondering how you would do that. Uh, let's see, can we do this one? Oh, well, this that. isn't the one you can do without calculus. Oh, this isn't? Um, unless you, like, memorize this, mm. so you don't actually have to do all the separating and the oh. antiderivatives, okay. right? This is like a, a statement that we started with. Uh, if the rate of change of n is proportional to t, then this. Okay. Y is equal to C times E to the KT, okay. or N is equal to C times E to the KT. Cool. All right. How does everybody feel about that? Now that I understand it more, it yeah. makes more sense. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't expect that everybody would go home and do the homework and be experts, so we would practice more, but it's also yeah. up to you to practice to the level that you need. So 6.3 is going to be the last section that we do, and we're going to do it. It's just like... I mean, there's a lot to 6.3, but there's a lot that we're not going to talk about because you don't need to know about homogeneous differential equations. You don't need to know about uh, logistic equations and logistic functions. Those are some BC concepts. Okay, so that's how BC is. Like BC in, in calc to BC, you would talk about this, and then you would go on and talk about all this other stuff, which we're not going to. 6.3 will be it. 6.3, the amount, the, the part that we're going to do is really just like. Harder problems, harder to separate why, the variables. Why do we get the option to take that test if we win? If we aren't have the information in that test. BC? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. no. Because so I was like. Test test. Well, I mean, it's, it's available to anybody who has $89. They're not going to police, like, oh, wait a minute. We looked at your trip. There's too many thousands of people taking this test for them to be like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just not a good idea if you have to take the class. But I'm saying, like, for our school, yeah. like, they type up that piece of paper and they're like, these are making tests we take. I'm sure there's millions of AP tests. This is Mrs. Williams' first year, and she's just trying to you know, oh, okay. do her best. And, and so, and she, I doubt she knows the difference between AP and BC. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Don't they have a BC online? Yeah. I don't I think I'll anybody else sure. ever has it. I think she took AP stats. Good idea. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> okay, that was good. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at some AP questions. Mm. Oh, don't do that. Mm. Oh, we're also not going to look at orthogonality, and uh, yeah, even though that's fun. We're just going to do some more differential equations problems where separating the variables maybe doesn't wind up with an exponential equation. Okay? We just need to figure out how to get 
y is and dy is on one side, x is and dx is on the other side. One helpful hint is don't let there be dt or dq or whatever in the denominator. So a and b are out. Oh, no. Well, in this case, this is like the easiest one because all, all they're doing is saying, basically, do the first part of this problem. <laughs> Understand the vocab that they're saying. Like, are they saying proportional, inverse of proportional, varies jointly with, what are they saying? Okay, so we gotta figure out which of these fits this wording, okay? So I'll read it and then and, and emphasize certain words. You write something down, we'll see, or you, know, you just write down A, B, C, or D, or E, or whatever you want. So Newton's law of cooling states, we already know this, we just did this, states that the rate of change of the temperature of an object, Q, okay, the, the, the temperature of, of an object is called Q, is proportional to, remember what that means, the difference between, proportional to, difference between, its temperature and its surroundings. If the surrounding temperature is 40 degrees, which of the following expresses this relationship? Okay, you look at it, okay? You look at it, you, not you say things out to you so that nobody has to think. Okay? B. <laughs> So that means what's out? What? What's out then? Which answers are not going to work? Um, D and E. D and E, those are not rates of change. Okay, it good. Says it's proportional to, so you need a K. Okay. Which gets rid of A. K is out. So the difference between its temperature and that of its surroundings, surrounding temperature is 40, so T minus 40, parentheses. Well, what, then why isn't it this? There's a, a K and a Q at 40. <laughs> Right, it's times the whole thing. It's times the difference between those two things. It's proportional to that quantity. It's not just proportional to Q and then minus 40. Like the, proportional to means it's K times it's the whole other thing that you're talking about. Okay, so B. Nice job. So dog, good job. All right, do not shout things out loud. The rate of growth <laughs> of the mass of a tumor M, oh. M with respect to time t is inversely proportional to the square of the mass. The differential equation that best describes the relationship is which of the following, and apparently I didn't read the of the following. Let's just write it. Okay. And so you're kind of doing the same thing as the previous problem, but you don't have multiple choice. Hey, thanks. ran through this proportional, inversely proportional thing. Two things I have. Connor, you want to come up and write it? Uh, sure. Connor! <laughs> Talk is good. So um, it says the rate of growth. So it must be um, the tumor with respect to time. Yeah. So, uh, Dm over dt. It's inversely proportional. Uh -huh. What's that? So you have it's proportional to the square of the mass, which is m squared. Under K, because here's how you can tell the difference. If it's, if it's under K, let me just, or if it's over K, let me just say if we write it like this, dm dt equals m squared over K. Well, then can't I write this as one over K times m squared? Mm -hmm. Right? And what does K represent? 
constant. constant. So is one over k a constant? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we still have a directly proportional thing. Okay. All right. So it's got a different name, k, one over k instead of k. The inversely proportional thing is when m gets bigger, d m dt gets smaller, right? You take this constant k and you divide it by a bigger number, you're going to get a smaller number. Isn't that inverse? Go up, go down. You ever heard there's a, uh, people say this quite a bit. If you, if you listen to people who think they're really smart, they, uh, oh, they may, so th they may, they they may be right. Oh, okay. They may be so right, they may not though. People use things too much. Like, random and ironic and like words that literally, and they literally. don't know what, they, what they're saying. A lot of people don't. So they'll say like, the, the this is inversely proportional to that. And there's an inversely proportional relationship between this and that, and they're just saying, um, let's see, the, I don't know, my interest in a story you're telling is inversely proportional to how many So the more kittens in the story, the less interested I am. What? That's, I'm just saying. Fine. Don't say kittens, say deaths. Words, the word literally, how many times the word literally comes up in your, in your speech? Like so many. Yeah. Like so many. Like so many. Or my desire to speak to you like is inversely literally. proportional to the amount of times that you use like in a standard sentence. Like, like a lot. <laughs> So people use this, this wording quite a bit. Now keep an eye out for it, like, I don't know, listen to NPR or, or some podcast where people are prone to be a little bit. More intelligent? Or they think they are. Think they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's half the test, so that's good. <laughs> uh, yes. If you write it to each other, shh, equals that. Uh, y of zero equals eight, which of the following is an expression for y of t, right? So, so the separation of variables. Best separate the variables, good. So let's see, what would that look like? dy over y <coughs> plus five, right? Plus four, t, 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 um, yeah, Anti derivative of both sides. I'm going to leave the four in there because I can see what's coming down the road here. What? Okay. Oh, oh, I got you. Natural log of y plus five. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Not the negative natural log of y plus five, not one half. Because when we take the derivative of y plus five, we get dy. We get dy plus zero. Okay. Oh. Equals what? What's the antiderivative of four? T to the third? T to the fourth. Oh, nice. oh, no, not that oh, one. Oh, the derivative. T to the fourth. <laughs> A plus plus C. C. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. E. Wow. So y plus, plus so. five equals C E to the T to the four. To the four. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Then minus five. Right? We'll call it C one so that this is definitely C. What's that say? What's it, what do you say? Minus, minus five. five. Minus five. So y is equal to C E T to the fourth minus five. What do you want to bet our thing over there looks something like this? It's uh, either A, B, or D. A, B, or D? Not either B or D. Oh, maybe. Maybe D. I'll put my money on A or B. Let's see what happens when we figure out what C is. How do we figure out what C is? Plug in zero. Plug in zero. Yeah, for what? T. Yeah, that one. For T. I'm not pointing at things. Plug it in for what? Plug in zero for t. For t and, and eight for y. Eight for y. Eight equals c. Eight equals c. To the zero. zero. Oh. To the zero? No. No. It oh, zero, zero to the fourth. You're chill. So it'd be <laughs> no. Zero to the fourth. So it'd be five. one. This would be one. So negative five. Thirteen. C equals three. No. Thirteen. C equals thirteen. It'd be thirteen. It'd be. We're done. We know that C needs to be replaced with 13. There's 13. It's B. Oh. <coughs> Yay! Woo! Great. Can you? Wait. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Sure. I, I was like, I don't see the difference between B and D, but then the E. Uh, I see. That'll, that'll get there. Watch out. Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't even. Yeah, I thought they were the exact same. I was like, what? Oh, we've done this one before. But we haven't done this part of it. Yeah. We've just said, like, <coughs> the cavity of this graph and stuff. The last part, part C, is about <laughs> differential equations. This is a differential equation, right? dB dt is equal to something with b in it. So the rate at which of the, we could write this equation without being told, right? Yes. Let's read the sentence. The rate at which baby baby bird gains weight, dB dt, right? Yeah. If we if we let b be the, the weight of the bird, right? The weight the weight of the bird as it changes with respect to time, dB dt is proportional to, so it's equal to some constant. Uh, maybe we couldn't write it because we don't know what one fifth is. Okay, that's all right. Uh, is proportional to the difference between its adult weight and its current weight. Okay, one fifth times, what does this represent then? Its adult weight, its current weight. Okay. Uh, at time t is zero, when the bird is first weighed as a teeny baby, its weight is 20 grams. Oh, I'm so small. If b of t is the weight of the bird in grams at time t days after its first weight, then dv dt equals one fifth times Okay. The thing that's actually helpful is knowing, it's very helpful just knowing that all of this stuff, all of that, what that's saying is basically saying there's going to be a differential equation. And look at it, there it is, right there. There is the differential equation. Stop talking about baby birds. Unless you're talking about calculus of baby birds. At time, t equals zero. When the bird is first weighed, it's 20 grams. Okay, great. Uh, and then they give us this equation. They haven't asked for anything, they've just been giving us information this whole time. Uh, that t equals zero and, uh, and b of t equals 20, or b of zero equals 20, that's gonna be helpful at some point, all that. Right, Oops, they just said that. Let y equal b of t uh, be the solution to the differential equation above with condition, initial condition b of zero equals 20. Right? Do all those words make sense? Mm -hmm. Kind of. All of these words are just kind of stating this, and, and they just tell us what told us what k is. K is one fifth, okay. uh, and they're telling us something about the solution, like the function that's the solution to this differential equation. They're saying when you plug zero into it, you get twenty. So use separation of variables to find y equals b of t, right? Or if you just think of it, to find b equals, right? Does that make sense? Uh, the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition b of zero equals 20. Even if you, even, all you saw was u separation of variables two, and you, maybe if you didn't even understand the rest of the words, you might just go ahead and try and do what right now? Separate the variables. So db dt equals one fifth, 100 minus b, we're gonna separate the variables. What's that gonna look like? So db over 100 minus b. Nice. Dt. Equals what? Good. And then when we do the uh, inverse of that, though, what do we have to make it negative? Something, yeah, different. Because then it's a negative to be on the bottom. <coughs> Squeeze that out. Yeah, because when you think about this as u, In order to use the, the, the log rule, the natural log rule for n derivatives, negative on top. this yeah. has to be du. When we take the derivative of this, what do we get when we take the derivative of 100 minus b? Negative db. Negative db. We need a negative db, which means we just need to put a negative out there. Yeah, OK. So negative. So now what's the answer derivative of du over u? U, which is 100 minus B. What's the antiderivative of dt? One fifth D. Okay, one fifth times T. T, yeah. You gotta get B by itself. Plus C. Oh, plus C, good. So, let's see. Well, how about if we just deal with this negative right here? Okay, we're going to still mean both ends by negative one. What's that? Let's get rid of this. Let's find both ends by negative one. 
Okay, or negative, or negative one. So the natural log of 100 minus b is equal to negative 150 t. Minus c. Yeah, we should do a minus c. Now I do the usual bit. Okay. So let's see. E to the negative one fifth t minus c equals one hundred minus b. And then just subtract one hundred. Is that? Subtract all the way. We could add b and then subtract this. Yeah. And then five. Okay. We could call this negative c1 and you can go ahead and do negative c times e to the negative 150 equals 100 minus b. Well, subtract 100 and times it by negative 1 at all times. It will be positive. So then b equals 100 plus c e to negative 150. Yep. What do we know? B of zero is 20. Yeah. What does that mean? B of zero B is zero? No, not 20. T is zero, B is 20. 20 C equals 100 plus, plus C times B to the zero. Yeah. Right? And then that's. So C is uh, equal to negative 80. Yeah. So C is negative 80. So it's plus a negative 80 times e to the negative 150. So b equals 100 uh, minus 80 times e to the negative 150. What did they want us to do? Yeah. Right, a particular solution. We just found a particular solution. That's all we needed to do. Oh. We don't even need to plug anything in to figure out like how much did it weigh at whatever time. This is this. I left this one to last, but I remember why. So never mind. We'll, we'll maybe do it. Yep. Right. right there. That's 59, right? Yes. What? Fix what? Connor will do it. Okay. Fix what? Fix it. Text it. Oh, text it. Yes. Connor will. Well, I've never texted or, or haven't texted in a long time. Just for my comment. Yes, you have. Throughout the video. Oh, you're right. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Got it. Man, just got the other one. I thought, really? How many times? Two days.